congratulations on making this happen. What was your what was the um, uh, end design for the Junos and how you were going to coordinate with live performances and the awards virtually? Because um, we're just watching this now. What is it going to be exactly like and what we're going to be seeing? Well, obviously, Rudy, it's been uh, an incredibly challenging year, as I think I maybe said to you guys all on, on Friday night as well. We've had to change up what we're doing a number of times. Uh, look, we'd obviously hope we could do some kind of live event, um, but the third wave um, and the stay-at-home order obviously changed things dramatically. Uh, so we had to move to more of a pre-recorded show. There will be some live elements tonight, but as far as all of the artist performances, we had to go to pre-records. We just could not risk uh, the safety of our artists, our crews, our staff. Um, again, and again, it would almost be impossible to do that right now in Toronto. Uh, and we were hoping we would be, you know, at an outdoor venue, have some people a bit to join us, but that just unfortunately was not in the cards. So yeah, you're going to see a, a number of uh, performances tonight, uh, presentations and award presentations as well, um, and a couple of uh, beautiful uh, special awards with the uh, the hippie receiving the humanitarian, also Jan Arden getting her Hall of Fame induction finally after not being able to do it last year. Congrats, my friend. Congratulations on Thank this you. win. How does it feel not just having this win, but this voice of yours being able to echo throughout Canada, around the world, especially going through what we've gone through uh, from uh, 2020 into 2021 with all the struggles that, that's been going on. Your yeah. voice and so your success is part of this. Yes, absolutely. Um, you know, it's, it's um, in ways it's bittersweet. You know what I mean? Cause I know so many people are going through so much, um, but to me, things like this and, and moments of, you know, moments where the clouds part, to me, it's almost like, there's a light at the end of the tunnel. You know what I mean? And um, yeah, I don't know. This year's been very difficult. It's been a lot of like inward work. A lot of us have had to, you can't go outside, but you can do the, you know, the inward work. And um, yeah, it's, it's the culmination of this being the Junos and being able to win. I don't know. It just, yeah, it makes all of this pandemic stuff less, you know, icky. <laughs> for lack of better words like it's i don't know it's i don't know it's great congratulations Thank you. <laughs> how you doing you look um, what up rudy <laughs> uh quick question yes, what was I... it like to share this stage at this point meaning of course when you think back and i can use the term back in the day all of you was just really about music when you look today like yourself an actress and you know a performer Everybody on stage is either has been now an executive, uh, stage performer, award winners on other platforms. What is it like to see that and know that you guys brought that type of legacy from the beginning and just, it was just about music, but today you've made it even more. We, we love that that was the goal. That was the intention. That was why we all started. Abs no one knew absolutely where they'd end up because um, different opportunities came to every artist, um, whether they got to write more, whether they got to produce more, whether they got to film and become directors, writers and on different mediums. Um, we, we worked so hard to get here that it's just a blessing because um, seeing everyone turn into execs um, that started out breakdancing, seeing um, people that you know used to write on walls and it was like, now you're telling me what song to submit. Like, Hello, like, you know, it's just having that whole transparency of, um, I poke fun of everybody that has just passed me in, in this way, but it's like, all right, well, I'm gonna call, you know, I'm, I'm recording again, right? So it's kind of a cool place to be. Um, I'm really only big woman, if them get the oldest woman in the game awards, I'll take it. Um, yes, I'll be the oldest tech in the game, doing some hip hop rap, I'll take it because I really do it to show the younger artists that there is longevity in hip hop and in female rap. And you don't have to be just a rapper. You can end up doing other stuff in the business. But um, if rap is what gets you there, that's Doctor, all. congratulations on this great honor. Um, first, the love of music, the love of teaching, and what is it like to see these students learning music and, you know, just achieving those kind of goals? Well... I always say that uh, I have the best job in the world. I guess most music teachers probably do. 
because it's it's a place where you get to hand a, an, an instrument over to a student or whether they're singing, you hand, they've never played it before. And the, the joy that they get that comes across their faces when they're finally able to make a, a, a beautiful tone, say on their flute or their clarinet. And then for me, I get to be with those kids then for four years as they travel through high school and to see the progress in those four years through the process of you know, learning, new, learning new music, as you know, which in the beginning doesn't always sound great, but by the end of the four years, the students having a beautiful tone, a beautiful sound and performing together, that is extremely thrilling. And that's just one thing, you know, seeing the kids and their self-esteem and noticing how their poise over the time changes on stage for, for performances, to see them becoming proud, uh, confident young people willing to share and give a part of themselves during a performance is always rewarding uh, to me as a teacher. And I can honestly say that every morning when I get up in the morning, I'm excited to go to my job, uh, to be with those young people who, who give so much of themselves every day, who work so hard in that process of becoming good musicians, and then to see the reward and the smiles on their face when they are when they get it. Um, and then for ensembles, I'm sure all of you have played in ensembles before. Um, when you sing in a choir or play in an ensemble, you've got that amazing teamwork and the, the solidarity and the support that our young people have for each other within each of my ensembles is also very heartwarming. And many of our students, as are many students all across Canada, I'm sure, come to the classroom with all kinds of baggage and things that are going on in their lives. And the music room is a place, because it's so creative and because we've created such a safe place, it's a place where um, they can be safe and they can share and um, and it can be healing um, because there's younger and older people that maybe have gone through some of the same things and then the students can be there for each other. And I just think that music education and being a music teacher and having those beautiful spaces, that, um, that's what makes me love my job. Hey. hey, Julie, how you doing? I'm awesome, how are you today? I am good. You know, we've been seeing a lot of each other this year, so. I'm saying. <laughs> Um, I want to go back, and I think because we are talking about history, you, of course, have all, you're always making history. Can you talk about what it was like to win the, your first Juno Award, the anticipation, hearing your name, and then going up there and actually receiving your award on that great yeah, song? Yeah, um, it's interesting for me because I, especially now in my maturity and recognizing for myself, I fundamentally believe that thoughts become things. And so I think that for many years, I actually, I hindered myself from winning. And as some people may not believe in all this mystical stuff, but I used to call myself Julie Lucci, like Susan Lucci. Every year, always nominated, never winning. Always nominated, Julie Lucci, Julie Lucci. My family knew I called myself Julie Lucci. My, my friends, everybody knew I called myself Julie Lucci. Finally, that year that I stopped calling myself Julie Lucci is the year that I won. And... Um, you know, I, it's interesting. I do wish it was brought, it was on the telecast. So we, you know, we still have a ways to go there as far as R and B is concerned. But my mom was around, and uh, at the time it was I was working for CTV, and they called. They had this whole thing set up. They called her, and she was on the phone, and it was a whole other thing. And so, but then I started hanging my g strings on it. You know, I started hanging my panties and like on purpose because for twenty years, fifteen years, I was looking for this trophy. Trophy, trophy, trophy. And then I got the trophy. And then he, I said, who am I with this trophy? How different am I as a result of getting this trophy? And so I started to go really deep spiritually and working on the who and the who, you know, and so grateful, especially for the craftsmanship and the, the Juno's beautiful. Um, but I realized that my value has to come for number one from God and, you know, my tribe and just really having a, a firm belief in myself and my gifts, my abilities. You know, I almost lost my voice. I had two vocal surgeries. All types of things happened after that. And having my voice now and doing theater, doing Caroline, you were there, Rudy. And hearing this, this power that had less to do with my skills and more to do with my commitment and recognizing that I was given this gift to share and to steward and to care for, um, that means more to me than any award anyone could ever give me ever in my life. So happy for you. Congratulations.
Thank you. Well, how are you doing? How are you doing, Rudy? I am good. You know, I always keep thinking back a couple of years ago um, when you were walking the red carpet, of course, being part of the uh, Slate music. Um, and we talked about, of course, you know, just your presence uh, being part of the Junos. And then you are having a strong presence in the 50th annual Juno Awards. What does that feel like knowing from back then when we talked, all the interviews that we've done to the position that you're in now, how does it feel about that growth? And also, like I said, almost like a responsibility because as they said, you are the next wave when it comes to hip hop. Yeah, I mean, I think uh, I've always hoped to be acknowledged as an artist that would be recognized as someone to hope for good things from. And so it's a very good, uh, obviously pressurized position to be in. Um, but, you know, pressure is good. I like a challenge and I think it'll push me to make hopefully my best round of music uh, going forward. And yeah, I think I'm just very, very excited to be acknowledged by uh, the Junos, you know, where once we were doing a masterclass and now it's the actual ceremony and, and um, I was able to speak tonight and hopefully the next time I'll be actually doing a performance and maybe I'll win someday, you know? You're always a winner. Congratulations. Thank you, Rudy. I didn't Good want to, see to be you. a musician. It wasn't. It wasn't in my. Uh, it wasn't one of my dreams growing up. I wanted to be a school teacher. <laughs> That's what I fantasized about in my parents' basement. And sometimes things just keep picking you up and plunking you back on the road. And music was just one of those things for me. I just started making up songs, and and that was that was it. I just, I just thought, well, maybe I can just make some extra money singing on the weekends. And then, you know, pretty soon you got, it's so weird. This is a really weird day and it's kind of overwhelming and it'll probably take me a while to figure it out. I, um, they sent me this, which is great. It weighs 400 pounds. <laughs> and um, the really hilarious thing is, Chris, can you hand me the other one? So last year, I know this is not what you asked me, but last year when this all got canceled, they had made me this one. So I have this one that says Jan Arden 2020 Hall of Fame. And I have this one that says Jan Arden Hall of Fame 2021. So I don't know, I think that's historical because I'm gonna go with it. I'm gonna say, oh yeah, I was, I was fucking inducted two years in a row. Yes, I was. <laughs> and I have the statues to prove it. So isn't this the greatest though? I love They're, it. I yeah, love your, it. Na your, na your, your name's already uh, etched in there. So you might as well take it. So right. <laughs> I took it. Congrats on being part of this. Rudy. Good seeing you. <laughs> William, I'm gonna let you answer this first. And Serena, if you wanna jump in afterwards. You know, we are talking about the 50th uh, annual Juno Awards. This is historic. Thousands upon thousands of performers have been on stage. Winners have been on stage. How does it feel that the both of you are part of this historic moment, especially when uh, Karis could have asked any other artist? Only a select few are part of this. The two of you are part of this. William, please start. Oh, it's an incredible honor. It's one of the the highlights of my career thus far to to be in the the conversation and invited back um, to be a part of this this great institution of people who work so hard to put Canadian music at the forefront and recognize it and people from all backgrounds you know we're we're in a real awakening and um, for First Nations representation to be there this evening and my my introduction to this world was singing for Leonard Cohen at the In Memoriam. And uh, that was back in 2017. And my friendships and my connections with, with everybody that's a part of Karis and the Junos is, like I say, growing and just kind of deepening where it makes you feel like, well, they use the term career artist a lot of the time. And it feels like a the beginning and exciting parts of a, a relationship that's going to last for a while. So uh, I, I, I hold it in huge regard, high regard, that we were asked to be a part of the beginning of the next 50 years, really. You know, um, 
We'll be ahead by a century by then. And uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm, honored, <laughs> I'm honored to be here at the checkpoint where this week we were all given a look into part of this country's history. And uh, I believe as the performances normalize with people such as myself and backed by star power like Serena, world's coming together here in such a way that I am so humbled by and just uh, absolutely moved by all of this. Um, my presence feels like a win for thousands of people that don't get seen and don't get heard. And I, I carry that with the greatest pride. This is my life's work and I will continue to do it to the best of my ability. And Serena? William, you're so beautiful. <laughs> um, yeah, I felt like this was the first time that I was able to be so present. I watched the entire thing, you know, and I was here and I was watching it like I kept on making like screams and I was yelling when I was hearing like my one of my best friends, Davinette, was doing a voiceover for you know, Jan Arden, and I was seeing all of these, I was seeing Julie Black, and she was like, ah, like yelling and just being so proud of, you know, all of these amazing artists and amazing talents that are a part of the Junos, but it's like, it felt like a big family, you know, and it, and it is a big family, you know, music in Canada, and I was just so honored to, to be a part of it. It was like seeing the performance come up and to be able to be present for it, because when you're there, it's it's very easy to kind of get lost in, you know, the hubbub and the energy and you kind of don't, I, I barely remember, you know, most of the Junos that I was at because I was so excited and I was so, you know, kind of lost in the like whirlwind of it all. And I felt the most present in this one um, because I was able to really see and to be proud and to watch, you know, all of the people that have been involved and over the years, just having so many friends there. And, and also my performance with William, where it's like, wow, this is this beautiful, amazing, talented voice that I've wanted to sing with since I first heard him and getting to do that and getting to know him and become friends. And yeah, I feel like William, you will be a part of this for you are a career artist and it's amazing to see you, you know, uh, shine like this. And I just loved being there beside you. Congratulations to both of you. Congratulations on this win right off the top, man. How did it feel hearing your name being called? And what were the emotions that you were going through uh, leading up to your acceptance speech? Uh, surprising, honestly. I was I was surprised. Um, and my emotions. My, I have a nervous stomach. So I was sitting here like um, two, two glass and a half of champagne and I get too honest. Although too honest is kind of my brand. So here we are. Um, it, I was nervous, I was excited, and I couldn't be happier. Uh, this message actually goes over to Feist, and I'm going to say Feist because that's what I'm used to. Um, what was it like for you going through this buildup and knowing the fact that for the first time we're going to see the Tragically Hip without its legendary lead singer and you, of course, being part of this? I mean, this is all of Canada, around the world, is seeing this version for the very first time yeah no pressure right <laughs> <laughs> i mean i i think that i was more nervous watching the performance tonight than i was doing it because when we all walked in the building and we're you know saying hello to each other in person and our gear is there and we you know i don't even think we really ran the song we just all spontaneously began to play it and we were all set up so far from each other that there was no like you know table talk it was just kind of the, the song was all that was happening and um and I think that uh, I just got through it by doing my best to hold myself open to whatever they were going to bring because that's truly the reason I was there I was there because I respect them and I can't imagine how difficult it would be to play without your brother beside you. I, I like the rest of Canada and the rest of everyone who you know loved and respected Gord really felt his passing and um, and I've uh, yeah, I've thought about Gord many, many, many times since he left. Um, so I guess I just opened myself up to 
um, just hold that space as best I could. I don't mean gourd space. I just mean hold my own space, hold myself open and, uh, and just be present so that these men could play again. I mean, I just felt honored that they thought that I could help them do that. And so there was just a very simple job to be done, not get in the way. <laughs> From the fans, thank you so much for doing this. Thank you. Thanks, Rudy.